Let's talk about EFI, or in my case, electronic Frankenstein injection. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. If you saw my last video in my 393 Windsor build, I hatched a plan where I'm gonna take two Chevy throttle bodies, remove all the injector components, and basically connect them together and use them in tandem as throttle bodies to provide the airflow to my motor. Now what's nice about this concept is I can put them in line, I can cut this throttle linkage section off, I can still maintain the throttle position sensor, and I think overall we will get a really good effect. So this is going to be part one of this project, and what we're going to do is we're going to strip the throttle body down. I'm going to show you the coupler that I machined to attach two of these together. And then I'm going to show you basically how I think I'm going to attach this to my truck EFI lower intake. I have three different options. Uh, it's kind of an A, B, and C situation where A is... What I'm going to start with, if that doesn't work, we'll go with B and on to C. Anyway, I'll be showing you what those three options are, and then hopefully in the next video, we will actually start doing some machining and fabrication to connect this to a truck EFI lower intake. All right, so the first thing that needs to happen is we need to strip this down. We can start by pulling hoses off. When I removed this from the truck that it was on, I didn't need any of these lines, so I just cut stuff. That one does not want to let go, so it's going to need a little persuasion. There we go. Got it off. Now, for this piece right here, we're going to need to maintain this seal for our air cleaner. But trying to get in there to clip wires and stuff, it's gonna be a little hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this piece out. That way we can clip it and get it put back in after the fact. All right, with that out, now we'll go to the idle air control valve. Now I already loosened this. I didn't figure you wanted to see an oversized wrench in the video. Set that off to the side. We have the fuel inlet and the fuel return line. That's got to come off because this whole entire piece here needs to come out and we can't remove it with these pieces attached. Now let's see about getting these fuel injectors off. I'm gonna hang on to these screws that hold the fuel injectors in place because I'm gonna have to fabricate a plate to cover the hole that's being left by the fuel injectors and I'll use these screws to attach said plate. And just like that, the fuel injector assembly comes completely off. It's important that we remove that because it is blocking the airflow of the butterflies and it's going to be a restriction. But now by removing it, that restriction has been eliminated and we have a really nice throttle body. Let's see if I can get this off without breaking it so that I can use that as a pattern for the replacement piece of aluminum that's gonna fit over that hole. And already you can see how this has the potential to be a throttle body in and of itself. All right, if we pull the throttle position sensor off of this end, you can see we have that nice blade there. And this is the key to be able to attach this side of one throttle body to the throttle linkage side of 
the next throttle body. Now the question then becomes, if we're attaching this end right here, how do you attach it to this end right here? Well, all this junk has to be removed on the throttle body that is not actually going to have the throttle linkage. To remove this, so the way this is made is the shaft is machined and then a double D slot is cut in the end of this piece of steel. It is then slid onto the shaft and then peened out to hold it in place. All a person has to do is get in there with a cutoff wheel or die grinder and grind this nub smooth, and then you can pop this throttle linkage off. This is one that I've already done. This is where it was up against the shaft, and you can see right there the marks where I had to grind it flat to get that off. It is a little bit of a press fit, so once you grind that, you do have to get under there with a screwdriver to get it to pop off. So other than removing that and doing quite a bit of cleaning, getting some grime and, and grit out of this, that's all we had to do to set this up as a throttle body. Here is my two throttle body injectors that have now been converted into just throttle bodies. We still have the throttle position sensor on this side. We still have the throttle linkage on this side because... As I mentioned before, throttle position sensor was removed from here, throttle linkage arm was removed from here. And now we need to couple those. So how do we do that? Well, this has a notched groove on it. So attaching to that is fairly simple. All we have to do is cut a groove into a connector and that gives us the option. But you really have to index this end. You want there to be some adjustability. There is a set screw that you cannot get to. Look at this. Underneath that plug right there is a set screw. And what that does is it comes through and connects with the throttle linkage right there. And that creates a little bit of space in here so that these butterflies never completely close. And that's important so that, you know, you still have idle when you've completely let off the gas. This has the screw, but now there's nothing touching it. So we're going to have to put a little spacer in there when we set the connector. And we need to have that adjustability so that the butterflies open together and properly. So how are we going to connect this? Well... I spent a lot of time thinking, I thought about taking the shafts out and welding them together, machining them, and then sliding them all the way back through. And while that would be a viable option, that was a high risk proposition. Because if I don't keep it perfectly straight, we're gonna have binding. The other thing you need to keep in mind, if you do end up pulling the shaft for any reason, make sure you grind these little nubs off of the bottom before you try and remove the butterfly screws. Otherwise, you're gonna break those screws off. Once replacement screws are installed, a little Loctite can be used and that will serve the same function of keeping those screws from coming out. So what's my solution? How do I get adjustability on this side and still have it mate to that? Well, my solution, is this right here. You can kind of see there is that notch inside. That goes on this end right here. And then on the other side, we just have an open hole with four set screws. So to use this, we're just gonna take and install it. Now what's nice about this, even after I cut it off, there is a flat spot right there. And if you look really close, you can actually see a mark where I had my set screws tightened down. So once all four set screws are tightened, I am not worried about this at all slipping. So we go ahead and we slide that all the way on. And then here comes the adjustment. I needed to put something down in the bore to create a little bit of a gap. And I have the end here off of a metal zip tie that was perfect for that. You could use a piece of pop can. I'm putting it a little more to the side because that creates a little more of a gap. 
I had to play with this. It took me several attempts to get everything the first time that I set this up. Then once everything is in place, we can go ahead and slide these two together. Now with those two now coupled, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down these set screws. I'm only gonna do three, the one on the bottom I'll get after the fact. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why is he only using set screws on one side? Why do I only have it here and not here? The reason I did that is there could be a little bit of flex. You know, once the intake is made, I wanted to have a little bit of movement and adjustment so that when this gets tightened down, there's no binding. And so having it free floating on this end, even though it's as far as the actual throttle movement, it's tight, having just a little bit of play allows me some freedom and a little room for error when these get tightened down onto the intake. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these apart. And there you can see my coupler nicely installed and we're gonna go ahead and finish tightening everything down. I found with set screws, once you get everything tight, there's a little trick to getting them to bite a little better. So you get them tight so that everything's properly adjusted. And then you take each set screw and you loosen it back up and tighten it again and you'll get a little more bite than you got the previous time. What you're doing is actually scoring into the metal that you're connecting to and the result is a much better connection. Now when I go to install this, I can just simply slide the two throttle bodies together and bolt it down to the intake. So you may be wondering how well this is gonna work. Well, let me show you. Nothing's bolted down, so there is gonna be a little bit of movement, but if I hold this down and I grab the throttle linkage arm here and I turn it, look at that. All four butterflies are opening together. They're opening the same amount. Because of doing that little bit of adjustment and using this zip tie when I was setting up the connector, everything is equally vertical. When I did this the first time, these two butterflies were not totally vertical in the wide open throttle position. And so that's why I had to make that adjustment in the resting position. One throttle linkage arm that controls both throttle bodies, one throttle position sensor that is tied to both throttle bodies. Other than blocking these holes, and blocking these holes, the only thing left to do is deal with the IAC. Now, the threads where we took out the IAC are metric. It is M20 by one and a half. And I wanted something because I'm gonna have to run to an external IAC. I wanted something that I could put some hose to. And so I found this little guy right here, got it off of eBay. This is M21 and a half to three eighths pipe thread. And so that is just going to go into both of these idle air control circuit bungs. And then from there, it's just a simple matter of running a hose from this out and from this one, connecting them together and then going to a GM type IAC. I will end up using some thread sealant on that to make sure that we don't have any vacuum leaks. But phase one of this project is done and I am very happy with the result. So that begs the question. We did all this work, we got all this going the way we wanted to. How do we connect this to this? Plan C is I take this big piece of aluminum. This is two by four solid aluminum and I machine it to take the throttle bodies on the top and I machine it to match up with the intake on the bottom. This would be very elegant. This would be super trick. This would also be a lot of work. And this was a very large chunk of aluminum that was not cheap. There's lots of machining things that I can do with this aluminum. So it is my fallback position. 
I will do it this way if plan A and plan B do not work. But at this point, I would like to save this piece of aluminum for something else. This is plan B. This is a two by four piece of hollow aluminum. This is probably the simplest design and the simplest way to do this project. All a person has to do is cut it to length, drill it out to match the intake pattern, cut holes in the top for the throttle bodies, and then weld caps across the end. This creates a beautiful open plenium, which is going to allow lots of air transfer between both throttle bodies. And I think this is probably gonna be the best flow option. The problem is that's an awfully large open plenium. And we all know that open pleniums can be hard on low end torque. So even though this is the easiest solution, this is why that for me is plan B. Plan A is kind of a hybrid of the two. Plan A starts with this right here. This is the truck upper. And I'm going to take my Sawzall and cut about two inches off the bottom of this truck upper. I can then put that piece on my mill and mill it flat. And then I'm gonna take a piece of aluminum, cut holes in it so that that bottom from the truck upper fits up inside and set the whole thing down. This is gonna give me a nice mounting space, lots of room. It gives me the ability to set up an open plenium for sharing between the two. Uh, that'll be an easy enough thing to do. You'll, I'll cut the open plenium and then I'll put a thin plate over the top of this so that we do have the sharing, but I'm also maximizing runner length to maximize torque. So that's gonna be the next video. The next video will show, probably in time-lapse, some of the machining that has to happen to make this truck upper attach to this, and then we'll create the adapter to go to those throttle bodies. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series on my 393 build, make sure you check them out. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.